room. When you have any questions, please raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. Um, obviously, you know, pleased with our guys' ability to make some free throws down the stretch. Obviously, this game could have been either way. And um, I thought we did a good job starting the game of a, <clears throat> just establishing an inside presence with Zach Eady and really wanted to go to him and go to Travion um, as much as we could. Um, we're that way anyway, so it doesn't really matter who we play. Very similar to Illinois. Um, I think Illinois and Purdue have a lot of similarities in terms. They probably have more overall team quickness than we do. Um, but their ability to make threes, our ability to make threes, we have low post presence. Um, like I said, this game could have went um, either way, but it's, it's very hard to defend teams that have that kind of a player to go along with skill. Obviously, we were fortunate he got in foul trouble, so we played half the game without him, and that obviously was to our advantage. Um, but I thought the guys that came in that, that spelled him, um, especially 13, I thought he really I thought he really played hard. And that dude, he, he battled, and, and um, that's what you take. It's going to be somebody that has to come off the bench and, and help you win. I thought our guys did some, some really good things. But I think we have a lot of similarities with Illinois. I, I, they're they're going to be a really hard out in our league, and they're going to be really tough to beat in the NCAA tournament. Chris? Hey, what does it say about your team to be able to come back from not only giving up a double-digit lead in the second half, but right. to keep doing it in the, in the first overtime, the second overtime? And what oh, what can a win like this do for you guys? You know, I think both teams showed a lot of poise. Um, I think this win just you know gives you confidence that you can go into a hornet's nest and uh, be up against it a couple times and, and find a way to make a play or get a stop or get a rebound or make your free throws like we did. Um, at the end, but our, our guys hung in there. We had, we had a lot of uh, contributions uh, from our team. Um, it was, you know, we, we tried to play 10. It wasn't, the game got small real quick. And uh, when, when it did, we, we, we didn't go as big. That's why Caleb first didn't play as much. We just, we stayed smaller. But um, just the ability to, to, to be different at times, to be bigger, be smaller, be able to play a couple different ways. We're still just an average defensive team. I think you guys would all agree with that. Um, but we got to get better um, in those areas. And, uh, but we, we were able to hang in there and be able to pull it out. We've got a couple games where we haven't done that. So that I think this is good for our guys' confidence. I think Bella has been out for a couple months, and obviously maybe the next she chance. She stayed out. <laughs> <laughs> she broke the whole time? Jeez. <laughs> So um, obviously, you know, not expecting and not game planning as you would. Right. So what were the adjustments like? Yeah, uh, you know, they're in-game adjustments. So it was something we didn't talk about. Like we didn't like we, we we discussed him and how good he was and how good of a passer he is. But he made some tough shots. I mean, the, the running one, the floaters and the off of one leg and getting he got stuck a couple times and made plays. A lot of times you get stuck. That's you know, it's the definition of it. Like something bad's getting ready to happen. He got stuck a couple times and made a couple of incredible shots. Um, for them, but um, now he's a great player. You know, just anytime you can have guys that can shoot the way Frazier and Plummer can shoot, then you know, and they can break you down with their quickness. Now you throw another guy in there that's quickness. Not a lot of people have three perimeter guys that can guard those guys and match up. It puts us in a real bind. Um, but yeah, it was something that we we're just kind of talking about going. We, we, we were trying to switch some at the end when he got deep. And uh, we didn't do a very good job of it. And then he, then a couple times our five didn't contest him when he, when he shot the ball. But um, I think that's um, even though I know it's it stinks when you lose a game, but I think it's also it's a positive for Illinois that they're getting him back and you're getting stronger in the middle of January. And what was there something Illinois was doing defensively that opened up those guys for Eric uh, and Travion? They did. They don't switch. Um, we tried something earlier that we got a layup on last year, and uh, Frazier sniffed it out. And we, we had a layup, and uh, he did a good job of seeing it. But then I, then, then uh, there was a slip play for us. Then, and then Sasha got a three out of it. So I guess three is better than two. It's kind of like their guy passes up on a layup and gets a three. It's like the, it's crazy how the game is now. And um, but no, we were just uh, trying to to back screen some when the ball went inside and just force those guys because a lot of times the biggest guy you want to bring for the most part the biggest guy on the court to double. You got guys like Kofi and Zach Eady. You know, you bring one of your guards, they just look over you. So it's not that big. It's a trap. It's a double. They still can make that play. 
Um, and, and so they weren't doing that. They weren't doubling. They were just coming at it. And we just thought if they weren't going to switch it, that we could just back screen and get it. They, we, they missed. Travion and Zach missed two or three layups in the first half. And uh, then at the end, Travion found him on the one. The other one was just a cut off a of post feed. But yeah, we want to be able to do that. So if those guys are constantly taking the dive and they take all that away, it just allows you to be one on one. And so we'll, you know, we just take what the defense gives us on that action. Uh, did, did you want to get Sasha going there in that second overtime, or is it just the way the offense kind of just the went? way it went? Yeah, we it, it's you can run stuff for him, and um, but like if Trent Frazier's just draped all over him, like now, like what do you do if you don't have a shot? Then you get stuck. It's like the one overtime. I, it was a horrendous play call by me, um, but now you're you're a little stuck then. So now you're trying to get him something. You're trying to get it going. Now if he can't feed the post, he can't shoot a three. You know, you end up with a helicopter shot. So you're, you're just stuck. And so, but Trim Frazier's a man. He's a good player. He makes it hard. He makes it really, really hard. So, you know, his ability to know what's going on. Like if you're there and like you pay attention, like some guys will just kind of half-ass do what the coach tells them to do at times. And you're just, I got, I got a couple of them. And you're just like, they just kind of kind of go through the motions. Like, dude, but the guys that just, you know, he's played college basketball for a long time. He should know. But like he knows everything that's going on there. We run more plays than the Cowboys. And he knows everything that's going on out there. It's pretty it's pretty impressive. I think he's got a bright future. I know you're not where you want to be defensively um, quite yet, but that six minute and fifty second stretch there at the end of the first half, was that kind of this team's potential? Yeah, but I also think they helped us a little bit. I think when you get and uh, sometimes some ruts, sometimes it's the defense, sometimes it's you, sometimes it's a combination. Um, but no, we, we played much better in that stretch. If we could have hit a couple threes in that stretch and, and tried to get the lead out even more. We had some really good looks that didn't go down at that time. But yeah, we played much better defensively in that time. But it's still, when you put ultimate size and quickness against us, it, it's still a chore. But I think it's a chore for a lot of people. Uh, just uh, how Zach played, played under composure, played under control, didn't seem to rush things when he got the ball down low, kind of let his moves right. speak for himself. I mean, just how, how big of a step was that for him tonight? Well, he should have been more comfortable than everybody else. He's a hockey player. It was a hockey game. So it was like, I mean, they, they, they fouled every play. We probably fouled every play. Obviously, you look at it from your perspective. But um, I thought he handled it well. Sometimes he can he get into that second dribble for him. That That's a hard that's hard. To try to get in a good enough position where you don't need more than a dribble or no dribbles at all. But no, I, I thought he embraced the, the physicality of the game. He didn't turn the ball over, um, which is great. And uh, he was ready to play. And that, that's the whole thing. If you can go and establish um, you know, your big men and, and really get them in a bind, it really helps out everything. Matt, outside of right here. Uh, outside of Edie just being such a large human, uh, what did you guys do to, to bother Kofi into one of his poor performances? No, I, I think his fouls were more kind of situational. One with a couple more drives, and you get clipped. Those are kind of tough ones um, to get things called on you. You, know, you want to be able to get your money's worth. They're going to put you on the bench for fouls. You want them, you want them to be able to uh, to count. But no, we just we wanted to go at him, and you know we have two guys. We have two high level all conference guys. You know they have they have one. It's not anything against those other guys, but they don't, they're not going to play very much because of Kofi, because he's so good. Well, we we timeshare, and uh, now just trying to keep those guys fresh and just to keep going at him and uh, just make it hard on you. You know you know he's going to make it hard on you, right? You know it's impossible. Like you can sit there. So one thing that they can do and we can do, like a lot of times you don't have somebody in your practice like that. Well, even though we don't, they're not like Kofi Coburn, it's Zach Eady's still hard for us to deal with. So, like when he gets stuck and he gets too deep, like our rules are different in practicing in Zach than anybody else, and that's what you have to do with him. That's why when the ball gets deep, you're in trouble because now when you come in and protect the paint and protect him, now they get those spray out threes, and when Illinois is getting both of those, that's when you're in trouble. What? It seems to me like these have been Eric's two best games of the season back to back here. What um, has kind of clicked with him lately? Well, it, you know, I've always talked about it. Like, he, you know, he's, he's played, um, you know, a lot of minutes, but tonight's the most minutes. And it's hard to be, can, you know, sometimes consistent when you get inconsistent minutes. That's always been kind of my theory, you know, with guys. I mean, you don't play as much or you're playing at a different, 
you know situation coming off the bench, it's it's different for you. It's a little bit probably a little bit harder for you. But I, you know, I thought he did a good job defensively. Um, you know, he made his free throws at the end. Um, only has one turnover, and uh, he redeemed himself on that and got Sasha a three right after it. But no, I, I thought he played well defensively and he did a lot of good things for our team. Matt, what's different about seeing Trent Frazier now, especially defensively, versus those first few years here? Yeah, he just knows what's going on. He knows everything. Kind of a savant in that way. Um, just, just knows play calls, knows the little things. Just a good two-way player. Like a lot of times, guys that can score when they come in here now, you got to like really change a lot of things to teach them team defense. You know, know what's going on. But, but when's the buy-in coming? Like you could see a couple years ago, the buy-in was, you know, right away. First couple years, it wasn't as much. I, th I thought he was still good at it. But it just takes a little bit of time. By the time you get it figured out, you're normally down in college. But, but for him, like obviously he plays five years. Um, it's, it's, it's a weapon. Because a lot of times guys that can shoot, when they don't shoot, like it affects other things. You know, with him, I don't think it affects other things. I still think he's trying to lead them and take care of the basketball and then defend. He's a, he's a really good defender, and, and he understands kind of what makes them tick, but he also understands what makes the opponents tick, Then he tries to disrupt, you know, and not let you do what you want to do. I'll let you in the left. Hey, Coach, kind of a big picture question. Obviously, today's win does a lot for you guys in the Big Ten Championship race. How do you guys see this shaping out? Because obviously today was a battle between two really good teams. Yeah, it, it's going to be difficult. Um, that's a good question. You know, obviously we have a lot of basketball still to play. Um, you're going to have to take care of home court. They obviously stubbed their toe today. We stubbed our toe against Wisconsin. So we both have a home loss. And you just, you know, you want to be able to, you know, win your home games. Coach Katie used to talk about win all your home games and split on the road. And he says if you do that, you're going to be in position that last week of the season. So that was his theory, and he won six of them. So we're going to. We're going to stick with it, but that's that's about the the recipe for can you can you do it in this league this year at 16 and four or 15 and five? A couple years ago it was 14 and six. I don't know if it quite gets to that, but it could. You never know. Like you never know how it is. That's why each game is so important. And the thing that we've tried to do with our guys is is just make them realize how hard every game is, no matter who you're playing. It's just it's uh, it's just difficult to win one game and then enjoy it. So like for us, like we got three games in a week, and we got to make up a game at some point too. So you play on Monday, we're gonna play on Thursday on the road, we're gonna play on Sunday, and like you know, so we have a we have a tough swing here with the people we're playing and bunched up. But after a while, guys don't want practice very much either, and so they would rather play some games. So this this is also a fun time too. Anything else for coach? All right, thank you, man. Thanks, guys.